Well, uh, hello everybody. Welcome back to another session of CE 397, Control Theory for Smart Infrastructure. So last time we finally got to the namesake of the class, which is control. Uh, we visited a little bit of control kind of midway through the class in PID control. Um, but last time we took a look at full state feedback control. So this is kind of the general case of feedback control for multivariable LTI systems. Um, so we showed that for a system of the form X dot is equal to X plus BU, uh, where your observation equation is equal to Y is equal to CX plus DU, we could define a generic feedback control law of the form U, our input is equal to some linear function of the current state of the system X, right? So we could define a feedback law of the form U is equal to negative KX. And substituting that back into our original system, we found that we could generate a closed form system, uh, sorry, a closed loop system of the following form. Uh, so we have a new closed loop system of the form X dot is equal to A minus BK times X. Uh, we can just call this our new state transition matrix, uh, a closed loop state transition matrix A tilde. And we could generate a new closed loop observation equation as well, uh, Y is equal to C minus DKX, uh, where this is our closed loop observation equation, uh, our closed loop observation matrix. And in doing so, we could essentially create a closed loop system, much like we did with PID control, and place the poles of the system wherever we want. And through that, we can get all the benefits that we got through feedback control earlier in the course. So stabilization, reference tracking, uh, disturbance projection, robustness to uncertainty, and so on. Uh, we essentially extended the concept of PID control to more general multivariable systems. Okay. Um, and we went through a couple exercises showing how we could place the poles of the system to control the behavior of a structural system. Okay. Um, but the name of that form of control, full state feedback, kind of hints at a problem. What if we don't have access to all of the states of the system? So if you, for instance, have a structural system, you may not have sensors that can measure the displacement and velocity of each floor, right? Uh, or if you have a, uh, a water network, for instance, you may not have sensors that can uh, monitor the pressure and flow within each element of that system. So it's very rare that we'll actually have direct access to all of the states of the system that we'll be able to observe all of those states directly. And that brings us to our next topic, which is full order observers. Okay, so this is kind of the dual problem of control, uh, as you'll see in a little bit. Uh, but what observers will allow us to do is to essentially, if we don't have access to all the states of the system, it'll allow us to reconstruct uh, an estimate of those states from some series of observed outputs along with a dynamical model of the system. Uh, so you may have heard of Kalman filtering, for instance. Um, has anyone here heard, heard the term Kalman filtering? So a Kalman filter is a special case of the observer that I'm going to be showing you today. It's essentially just a way of picking the optimal gain uh, for that observer. But the principle is essentially to use feedback between the observed and estimated output uh, to try to drive your estimate of the system state towards the true state. And I will show you how to do that in the rest of today's lesson and also uh, give you a chance to design an observer of your own. Okay, so are there any questions? on observers before I move on? Any questions on the concept of observers? Cool. So let's go ahead and formulate the observer problem. All right. So. Uh, just as before, let's say we have an LTI system of the form X dot is equal to AX plus BU. And our observation equation is given by Y is equal to CX plus DU. Okay, so this is our 
system that we're interested in observing. Uh, it has some true states and some known input. Uh, what we can do is we can create a running estimate of our true system state. We can create a running estimate of X as follows. We can, so we can define a new state equation, X hat dot is equal to AX hat plus BU. So we know the control input, but we don't know the state exactly. So we're creating a new, essentially an artificial copy of our true system. So X hat dot is equal to AX hat plus BU and Y hat is equal to C Y hat, oh, sorry, um, C X hat plus BU. Okay, so we're essentially just creating an artificial copy of our real system that's going to run alongside our real world system and provide an estimate of the state. Yes, that should be DU. Okay, so let me kind of give a visual of what it is that we're doing here when we're creating a observer. And I know this can be a bit abstract, so I want to uh, I want to kind of help you visualize it. So let me draw out the block diagram of our real system so we can represent an LTI system in the form of a block diagram. So we have our input U coming into this block B. And let me just draw the rest of this before I start talking about it. Okay, so we have this series of blocks here, and I will explain what this is in a second. We're going to have a feedback loop here. Okay, so this, this uh, link right here, this is x dot. It's being fed into this integrator uh, where it will create our state at each time step x. Uh, and down here on this branch here, we'll actually have a block A, which represents our state transition matrix. And this is going to be fed into C, which will produce some output Y. Okay, so this is actually just a representation of our LTI system in block form. Um, note that we have that x dot here is equal to ax plus bu, right? And that x dot is being fed into this integrator where it's giving us our solution x. Okay, so this is just a block diagram representation of our state space system. What we can do is we can take this block diagram here and essentially just replicate it down here. Uh, let me draw right here. So we're going to have our B matrix. We're going to have the same thing down here. And the same feedback loop on our same A matrix. This is still going to be fed into C and it will produce some output. Um, but in this case, what we actually have down here is instead of X dot, we have X hat dot. Instead of X, we have X hat. And instead of Y, we have Y hat. Okay, so this system is going to be fed with the same control input. It's going to be fed with the same U, but we may not know the initial state of the system. So this, for instance, we may not know the initial state exactly. We might have uh, X hat not instead of the true initial state X hat, uh, sorry, true initial state X not. And we may also have some kind of disturbance entering the system as well uh, that we can't know exactly. Uh, so we may have 
some sort of disturbance as well. Okay, so this is kind of a visual representation of our observer. It's essentially a copy of our system that's running alongside the true system. It's being forced with the same input uh, and we're getting some estimate of the output y hat. And we might also have just uh, access to our estimated state directly as well, x hat. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem a little bit more closely. So we, we've created this copy of the real system that's running alongside the real system. Let's look at the error between the true state and the estimated state of the system. Okay, so the error, let's, say, let's look at the error. And we can define the error as simply being equal to x minus x hat. Okay, so the error is simply just the true state minus the estimated state. Now, the error is a function of two dynamical systems, right? So the error has its own dynamics. If we differentiate the error with respect to time, we get e dot is equal to x dot minus x hat dot, because the derivative is just a linear operator. The error of the system has its own dynamics. And we actually have expressions for both of these, right? We have expressions for both x dot and for x hat dot. So what is our expression for x dot? What's our equation for x dot? Mm -hmm. So it's just ax plus bu, right? So e dot is equal to ax plus bu. And what is our equation for x hat dot? What's our equation for x hat dot? Ax hat plus, well, actually we know the input, we know the control input, so it'll be BU, okay? And we can go ahead and simplify this. So we see that we have BU minus BU, so these go away. And therefore the error, the dynamics to the error, or the rate of change in error over time is equal to A times X minus X hat. And what is this quantity here? Right, this is the error. So we have that our equation for the error is just simply equal to um, e dot, the rate of change of the error over time is equal to a times the error. Okay, so the error is defined by this homogeneous system. Uh, the rate of change of the error is simply equal to the state transition matrix times the current error. Um, so what does this tell us? Um, so one thing, um, what does it tell us if A is asymptotically stable? So if A is stable, and the, uh, what, what does that imply about the error and how it evolves over time? What will happen to the error over time if A is stable? Right, so say if A is stable or if it represents a stable system, the error will decay to zero over time. Okay, so that's good. So that tells us that if we create an observer like this and our system is stable, then eventually our error will decay to zero and our estimate of the system state will approach the true state. Um, but this isn't ideal for a couple of reasons. So there's two problems with this observer. Okay, first, it doesn't work for unstable systems. 
And that's a problem because often when we are using observers, we are using them with control, with feedback control to try to stabilize the system. So if your, if your system is unstable and you're trying to control it to make it stable, you can not use this type of observer or control. Okay, so it doesn't work for unstable systems. And second, we typically want, um, we want the error to converge rapidly to zero. So in this formulation, we're kind of at the mercy of whatever our system is. It'll only, the error will only decay to zero as fast as the system does, but typically we want the, the error to uh, converge to zero much faster. We want to track the state of the system very closely. Um, so an observer of this form is not, uh, not ideal. So what can we do about this? Are there any ideas? Any ideas? We want to track a reference. Right? We want to track the true state of the system. So what's, a, what's one way that we could do that? Just thinking intuitively. Any ideas? So, what we can do, we want to essentially track the true state of the system. What we can do is we can use feedback. So just as with control, where we're trying to control the state of the system, we can feed back a function of the error between the true state and the estimated state to essentially drive the estimated state towards the true state of the system. We can use feedback for reference tracking. And that brings us to what's called the Leuenberger observer. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of the general case of an observer for which there are um, many popular varieties like the Kalman filter, which I will show you on Thursday. Uh, this is kind of a general class of state observers. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed back the difference between our estimated and observed outputs into our um, the dynamical system of our estimator. Okay, so we have that, and previously we had that x hat dot is equal to ax hat plus bu, and that y was equal to cx hat plus du. What we can do is we can add an extra term here, Okay, so we can add a new term, L times Y minus Y hat. Okay, so we're feeding back the difference between the true state and the estimated state. So this Y, this might be something like sensor data. Okay, so this might be uh, sensor data that, that's observing the true state of the system. This Y hat would be our modeled system. And this L is a feedback gain matrix that is analogous to the feedback gain matrix K that we looked at last time. Okay, so it's a similar idea, except this is operating on the equation for the estimate of our state rather than the true state itself. Okay, so let's take a look at this more closely. We have x hat dot is equal to ax hat plus bu plus l times y. Um, and y hat we know is equal to ax hat plus bu. Uh, sorry, this should be uh, cx hat minus du. Okay, so I've just expanded out our term for y. 
Now, what we want to do now, we were originally interested in the error of the system and how it evolves over time. So let's go and let's plug this back into our equation for the error. Okay, so looking at the error, we have that the dynamics of our error are given by E dot is equal to X dot minus X hat dot. Okay, we can just go ahead and plug in our equations for X dot and X hat dot with our X hat dot now given by this um, equation with the feedback gain. So we have that E dot is equal to quantity AX plus BU minus our entire equation here. So this will be AX hat plus BU plus L y minus cx hat minus du. All right, and let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Uh, so we see that we have bu over here minus bu over here. So these bus will cancel. And we see that we can actually take this A matrix here and factor it out. So we'll have e dot is equal to a x minus x hat. And then minus L times y minus cx hat minus du. Okay, and we're almost there. Remember that we have another equation for y here. So let's go ahead and expand out y. I'll give you a second to just finish writing down if you were writing down. Remember that our y is given by cx plus du, right? So we can go ahead and expand that out as well. E dot is equal to a times x minus x hat minus L times quantity CX plus DU minus CX hat minus DU. Okay, so you can see that these DUs will go away. We can factor out the C. We get that E dot is equal to A X minus X hat minus L times C times quantity X minus hat. And remember this x minus x hat, this is the error. And so we can simplify this even further. We get that the dynamics of the error are given by quantity a minus lc times e. Okay, so whereas before we had the e dot was equal to a times e, now we have this new closed loop system, e dot is equal to a minus lc times E. So let's call this matrix here a hat. Okay, so what would happen? What would happen if we selected L, we selected our gains such that the eigenvalues, lambda one through lambda not, uh, sorry, lambda one through lambda n are all highly negative. What would happen if we selected L such that the eigenvalues are very negative? Right, so the error will decay very, very quickly, meaning that our observer will track the true state of the system very quickly. So let me just go back um, to our diagram here. So just finish things off. So what we've done essentially is we've created another feedback loop. We've created a gain matrix L. Okay, we're taking our true state, uh, sorry, our true observation Y. We're taking our estimated observation Y hat. We are adding Y, subtracting Y hat, feeding it back into this L gain matrix, which is entering in as an input here. Okay, so we're using feedback to feedback the 
error between the true and observed, uh, sorry, true and estimated uh, observations to try to make the error decay to zero very quickly. All right, are there any questions on this derivation? Any questions? I know this was a bit abstract when I first encountered it. Uh, so I wanna make sure uh, answer any questions that you have now. So it's it's analogous to the control problem we looked at last time, um, but in this case, we are using it for the purposes of uh, state estimation. Okay. So before we get into examples, I want to show you, um, we can also go ahead and write both the true system and the estimated system together as an augmented state space system. So let's go ahead and do that. We have that our equations, uh, so let me just write them out. Our true system is given by x dot is equal to ax plus bu. Our estimated system is given by uh, x hat dot is equal to, we can rearrange the equation I gave before to get a minus lc times x hat plus lc times x plus bu. And we can go and write this as an augmented state space system. So essentially we just stack these two together. And we have D by DT of X, X hat is equal to the following block matrix, A zero, LC, A minus LC times, x, x hat, plus, and then we have our input matrix, b, b, times u. Okay, so this is how we can express both the true and estimated dynamics together in a single state space system. And we'll use this uh, for simulating the system and its estimator in just a second. All right, are there, any questions before we move on? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and work on an example then. Uh, so I'm actually gonna mostly do this on a computer, but I'll start just by writing down the problem. Okay, so let's say that we have, oh, wrong color. Let's say we have an LTI system. Of the form X dot is equal to one, negative one, negative three, two times X. It's just a homogeneous system. And let's say our observation equation is given by Y is equal to the row vector one, zero times X. Okay, so we have our A matrix, we have our C matrix. Uh, we're not worried about any inputs for this particular problem. And let's say we want to design our feedback gains. So we want to design L such that our poles are at negative five and negative 10. Okay, so remember that our um, closed loop state transition matrix A hat is given by A minus LC. If we write that out, we have one, negative one, negative three, two, minus uh, for the dimensions of our gain to work out, this has to be a column vector of the form L1, L2. Um, take the outer product with C, which is one zero. Uh, and that will give us our closed loop system of the form. I'll write it one line down. Uh, one minus L1, negative three minus L2, negative one, two. Okay, so what, we're, what we want to do is we want to define those gains L 
such that our observer poles are at negative five, negative 10. And I could do it by hand, but I think it's more instructive uh, for this problem if I show you on a computer. So we're gonna go ahead and go through an example of how we can do observer design uh, using Python. Okay. So if you have your laptops and you wanna follow along, uh, you can go ahead and do so. After this example, uh, I am going to have you continue working on the structural problem, but now I'm going to give you an additional uh, set of problems related to observer design for that three-story structure. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a Python session here. All right, can everyone see the text okay? Is this big enough? Okay, so first let's go ahead and just import our modules. So we're gonna import NumPy, import sci scipy.signal. I'm gonna import scipy.linalg. I'm gonna import matplotlib.pyplot as plot. And then you may have to do this line as well, uh, matplotlib inline if you want to plot in your uh, Jupyter Notebook. Some notebooks don't require it though. Okay, so let's go ahead and import our modules. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna define our A and C matrices. So let's go ahead and write out our A matrix. A is equal to, I'm just gonna specify like this. So I'll say np.array. I'm just going to define a uh, single list here. One, negative one, negative three, two. And then I'm gonna reshape it to be two by two. Okay, so that is our A matrix. And let's do the same for our C matrix, np.array. One, zero, we're going to reshape to a row vector. So that'll be one, two. Okay, so let's check our A and C matrices. Your A matrix should look like this. And your C matrix should look like this row vector here. And let me know if I'm going too fast, just uh, raise your hand. Okay, I'll, uh, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to check if our system is actually observable. So uh, similarly with feedback control, we had to check that the system was controllable first before we could uh, you know, perform feedback, feedback control to place the poles. Um, so the first thing we want to do is check if this system is observable. It operates kind of the same way. Uh, so how can we do that? That's probably the easiest way to check for observability. So we can use the common rank condition, right? So we can construct our rows of the of the common uh, sorry of the observability matrix. So we'll have C and C times A. And all we need to do is we need to stack these on top of each other. So I can use np.vstack and stack these on top of each other. And let's call this Q, O. So we can see just by looking at this, this is going to have a rank of two, but just for good measure, if we want to check it, we can use np.linalg.matrix rank, call it on Q, O and we see that it has a rank of two. Okay, so this system, is this system observable? Yes, the system is observable, meaning that we can place the observer poles wherever we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and define our observer poles. Let's call it uh, P. I'm gonna say our poles are at negative five and negative 10. So let's call, uh, create an array with elements negative five, negative 10. All right, and we can use uh, the same function that we used in class last time, which is the place poles function. So we have scipy.signal.place. 
place polls. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation for this function though. So I'm just gonna put a question mark after it. So the function says that it will compute the gain matrix K such that the eigenvalues of A minus BK are equal to the poles. So is this gonna work for us? What's our closed loop uh, matrix again? Our closed loop state transition matrix? It's A minus LC, right? So our gain matrix is on the left-hand side and this function only works for the gain matrix on the right-hand side. So what can we do about that? So here is a question I have for you. Think about how we can how we can do this. Let's say um, X is a matrix in R n by n, and it has eigenvalues lambda one through lambda n. Does X transpose have the same eigenvalues? I see a couple nods. Who thinks that uh, X transpose has the same eigenvalues? Okay, so I see uh, most of you. So it turns out, yes, it does. And we can show this uh, using diagonalization, right? So if X is equal to V lambda V inverse, so if X is diagonalizable, we can take the transpose. So X transpose will be equal to this entire quantity transpose, which is equal to V inverse transpose times lambda transpose times V transpose. And the transpose of a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues is just the same diagonal matrix, right? So this has diagonalization given by V inverse transpose times lambda times V transpose, where this, um, these are our corresponding uh, matrices of eigenvalues, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, eigenvectors. Okay, so that gives us an idea for what we can potentially do we want the poles of we want the poles of a minus lc right so these are equal to the poles of a minus lc transpose which is equal to a transpose minus c transpose l transpose okay so now this um equation for the closed loop state transition matrix is in the form that we need it to be, right? We have our gain matrix on the right-hand side and our new matrices that we need to put into this function are A transpose and C transpose. So we can go ahead and do that. So let's call scipy.signal.placePolls. I'm gonna call the output of this function output. And the arguments are gonna be A transpose. And instead of B, we'll have C transpose. And our poles are just gonna be the same. They're just gonna be P. And let's see the results. So we can get our gain matrix by calling output dot gain matrix. And this will give us are gains that are needed to place the poles at those two locations. Now note, this is actually giving us L transpose. So if we want L, we need to take the transpose of this. Okay, and similarly, we can verify that we have the poles in the correct place. We can call output dot computed poles, and it shows us that we have eigenvalues at negative 10 and negative five. All right, so let's go ahead and simulate the system. We're going to show how the estimator tracks the true state of the system. I want to show you visually. Okay, so we're going to set up an augmented 
state space system. So we're going to use that equation I showed in the previous slide where we have X and X hat stacked on top of each other. Uh, to do that first, we're going to first need to define our augmented state space matrix in block matrix form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a two by two matrix of zeros. So I'll say is O is equal to NP dot zeros two, two. Okay, so we'll need that matrix of zeros. And then let's create our block matrix. So from our slides, we have that our augmented state space system is given by the following. So we'll have A in the upper left block, uh, um, zeros in the upper right block, LC and A minus LC. So let's go ahead and do that. We have A augmented, so I'll call it A aug is equal to NP dot block. So this is gonna create a block matrix for us. We can feed in a list of lists here. And the upper row will have A and O. And the bottom row will have L times C and A minus L times C. And if you did it correctly, you should have something that looks like this. This is our block matrix. So let's go ahead and simulate this system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a time range. So I'm gonna say TS is equal to the NP dot lin space zero to one with a hundred increments. Uh, so lin space just creates an even interval from zero to one with 100 increments in this case. Okay, let's define our initial state. So I'm going to have x naught is equal to np dot array when the first state is going to be one and the second is going to be zero. Okay, so that's our true initial state. Let's define our estimate of initial state. So x hat naught we'll say is just going to be all zeros. So np dot array zero zero. And if we're using this block matrix form, we need to stack those two together. So let's stack them together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new vector called x aug not or x augmented. I'm going to call np dot concatenate. So this will concatenate them together. And then the arguments will just be x naught and x hat naught. All right, and so what we can do, this is similar to what you did last time in class. We're just going to use the matrix exponential to evaluate the response of this homogeneous system over that time interval. Okay, so this will be similar to what you did yesterday. So I'm gonna call, we're going to use a list comprehension here. Scipy.linalg.expm. So this is the matrix exponential of A aug times T. All matrix multiplied with X aug naught for T and TS. And so what this is going to do is it's going to go through each time step. It's going to compute the matrix exponential of our state transition matrix times that time. And then it's gonna multiply the matrix exponential by our initial state vector. Okay, and we can go ahead and call the output. You see that it's simulated for each time step here. Let's go ahead and stack these together. So I'm gonna call np.vstack on this uh, list to make it a little bit easier to work with. So it'll give us a regular array. And I'm gonna call this whole thing capital X. Let me know if you need more time. Did anyone miss any instructions or code? No, everyone's good? Okay, so note, okay, let's look at each of these columns. So the first column is, the uh, the true first state. The second column is the true second state. Third column is the estimated first state. And the fourth column is the estimated second state. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plot each of these here. Let's create a plot. Big X equals plot dot subplot. So I'm just gonna create a plot with figure size of 12, six. And let's go ahead and plot each of these. So I'm gonna go plot. Uh, the first argument to plot will be T and the second argument will be the first column of X, which is X colon zero. Let's color it red. And let's label it. Uh, actually, I'll I'll do that part later. Okay. Oh, T is not defined. Oh, it's, it's T S, right? Okay. And you can see that the first state uh, rises exponentially, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and plot the second state. So this is the second column of X. This will be the true second state, and I'm going to color this one blue. So we have the first state rising, the second state falling. Let's go ahead and plot the two estimated states. So I'm going to plot the third column of X and the fourth column of X. And for these ones, I'm going to give them dotted lines. So I'll say line style equals dotted lines and line style equals dotted lines. Okay, and there you can see the true states in the solid colors and the estimated states uh, with the dotted lines there. So let me go ahead and just add some labels here to make it more clear. So this here is X1. This one here is X2. This one here is X hat one. And this one here is X hat two. And if I call plot.legend, then I get the legend up in the upper left-hand corner there. Okay, so you can see, uh, it's getting hard to see both the code and the plot there. Here, let me just leave it like that. Okay, so we can see that initially, the initial states of the two variables are a bit off. Uh, but as we apply that feedback over time, the estimated states converge towards the true states, even though this is an unstable system. Okay, so we've used the Leuenberger observer to track the uh, true states of the system. So you'll note here that um, the first state tracks a bit better. And the second state is off a bit at first. Why do you think that is? Just from the way that we set up the problem. Why do you think the first state tracks better? Yeah, very good. Yeah, so we have our output, uh, our measurement matrix was one zero. Right, so we have a direct observation of the first state, so it tracks a bit better uh, than the second state. And we can go and verify that if we go up and we instead define C to be zero one. Run the entire thing again. You'll see that it tracks much better this time. It tracks the second variable much better. And the first, the first estimate also tracks pretty well too. So in this case, having a measurement on the second variable appears to be better than having one on the first variable. Okay, cool. So I hope that uh, demonstrates to you how you can use observers to track the state of a dynamical system. Uh, what I'm gonna do for the rest of the class is give you a chance to work on a more practical problem, looking at the three-story structural system and designing an observer uh, for that system. So let's go ahead and I will give you a problem to work on. You can use the rest of class to solve it. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so let's consider the three-story structural system from last time. 
Okay, this time we're gonna change the mass stiffness and damping a little bit. So the mass M1, M2, and M3 are going to be one. The damping C1, C2, C3 are going to be two. And the stiffness K1, K2, and K3 are going to be three. So in this case, we've just switched the damping and the stiffness from last time. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is it'll make, it'll make the plots look a little bit easier to interpret for the observer problem. Okay, and we're going to let our C matrix be the following. C is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so we're essentially going to be have, uh, we're going to have just a single sensor on the middle floor that's going to measure the displacement. And that's all that we can measure about this system. And what I want you to do is to design an observer to track the internal states of the system, reconstruct the uh, displacement and velocity at each floor. Uh, and I'll give you instructions for what to do in a second. Um, but essentially, I'm going to be giving you a chance to design an observer for this more practical problem. Okay, so you're going to you can use the code that you uh, developed last time. Let me just give you a couple uh, particular specific instructions to work on. Okay, so for this system, first, I want you to verify that the system is observable. So verify that system is observable. Second, I want you to design an observer. So I want you to design that uh, observer gain matrix L. Design an observer L to place the poles of the closed loop system. A minus LC at negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. And finally, I want you to simulate the homogeneous response. Simulate the homogeneous response to the following initial conditions. X naught is equal to zero, 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 one. And our initial estimate X naught hat is going to be all zeros. I want you to do is to plot, sorry, I want you to plot the actual displacements, plot the actual displacements, so x1, x2, and x3, as well as the estimated displacements. That will be x1 hat, x2 hat, and x3 hat um, for the first 20 seconds. OK, cool. So I'll be coming around to help you with that. I'll give you the rest of class to uh, work on that problem or on the structural control problem if you haven't finished that from last time. Uh, I will let you go ahead and work on those. I guess I should uh, just very quickly show what the ultimate response should look like if I can over here. How can I? Oh yeah, here we go. So what you should get and I just plotted the animations here. This is for a system that is just being struck by an impulsive input, right? So you can see that the sensor's on the middle floor. So the darker lines are the true state, the kind of faded lines are the estimated state. And you can see that initially the estimated and true states are off of each other for the upper floor and the lower floor, but as time moves on, they kind of converge on top of each other. Okay, so this estimator is able to track the true state of the system or track the displacement and velocity of those two uh, unobserved floors. 
Um, I should also note that this also works for the case where you have an unobserved disturbance input. So down here, I have forced the, uh, the true system with a periodic disturbance that the observer doesn't know about. And the observer still, because of feedback, manages to track the system pretty well. Okay, so this is, it's robust to um, unknown disturbances into the system as well. Okay, so it's a very useful technique. On Thursday, we'll be showing an optimal observer technique called uh, the Kalman filter. All right, with that, I will let you go ahead and work on these problems and I'll come around to help as needed.